Welcome to SBA Experience. On this video, we have a special treat. We're going to be interviewing Ashley Cheeks, President and CEO of Written Success, which is a business writing planning firm, and she's going to just give her give us her wisdom and help us to really understand the value of properly preparing a business plan. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Hi, Ashley. Welcome and thank you for joining. Hey, Sebastian. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Definitely. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining. So first, Ashley, your, your company is Written Success. Um, you've been around since 2011, right? Um, and the business, well, you yourself are a member of the Forbes Business uh, Development Council, correct? Um, so if you would first just tell us a little bit about your, your firm, your company, and, um, and what does that mean to be a, a member of the Forbes Business Development Council? Written success supports entrepreneurs um, who are either trying to start a business or grow their business. And typically they come to me when they need support with funding or when they need support with strategy or both. Um, when it comes to funding, they're either looking for investors, uh, co-founding partners, um, or they're looking for SBA bank loans pretty traditionally. Um, and the entrepreneurs that I support are looking for somebody to kind of help with the the nitty gritty of researching financial modeling just kind of all the ins and outs that make a business plan either loan worthy or not so that's what they come to me for um and regarding the business development council that's a pretty amazing group so it's made up of professionals in business development a lot of sales a lot of marketing and a lot of just entrepreneurs founding their own businesses and the council is a place where like-minded people can get together and share some wisdom, some insights, and some best practices with each other. Um, and it's a relatively, um, there's a bar on what you can do to get into this council and it's invitation only. So it's a complete honor to be part of it. Um, and I've been a member of the Forbes Business Development Council since 2017, if I recall correctly. It's a great organization. That is awesome. So, so let's um, talk a little bit, uh, you know, specifically about business plans as it pertains to SBA loans. Um, and, you know, tell tell us just a little bit about what are the key components of of an SBA business plan. Yeah. So, and you said something really important because the components of a business plan for an SBA loan are very different than what the components are for an investor or seeking a co-founder. So, very important to know the nuances nuances um, of an SBA business plan, you're going to be looking for a more traditional structure. So the table of contents is going to be your typical, it's going to be your market research, um, your founding team overview and the background of the biography for the actual founder and entrepreneur launching the business. Um, the market research needs to be really on point in terms of what is the industry doing today? What was it doing for the last five years? What are the trends and what are the forecasts in the industry for the next five years? And then you need to understand your competitors. So your competitive analysis is something people tend to skim through. Um, and you really have to do a deep dive on what your other competitors are doing well and are doing terribly. Because you are going to capitalize on that for your business. And sure. that's going to segue into your market entry strategy section. That's where you use all that knowledge from the industry, um, from the market segment in general, and from your competitors. And you're going to spin that into, OK, based on the, the data, based on the research, based on the environment, this is how I'm going to enter the market and how I'm going to succeed and thrive and do it differently than everybody else. Um, and so after market entry, you've got your operations section, which is more the nitty gritty day to day, your POS systems, how you're going to track your income, that sort of thing. Um, and then after operations, you should have a SWOT analysis, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and then your financials. And that's your, your cash flows, that's your balance sheet, that's your income statement. And for your SBA loan, your loan uh, amortization schedule should be in there as well. Awesome. That's awesome. That's great insight. So now on, on the uh, website, on the SBA experience, um, as a resource for, you know, for most folks that maybe are just getting started, they're not even sure, um, I do have a, uh, a tool there, which is Life Plan software. Are you familiar with it? I am, yes. And what do you feel about that software? Life plan's great. So life plan is um, when entrepreneurs come and they're very they have they have time, but they don't have a lot of money. Life plan is the answer, right? And if they're really um, independent in their ability to do research, so people typically hire help when they can't research or when they don't know how to do forecasting. Mm. 
if you're willing or and able, because it does take some time, but if you're willing and able to really dig in, learn, take some tutorials, take some lessons, talk to some people, and learn how to do it right, that's when Life Plan is your solution because it gives you a structure. It gives you um, a fill in the blank. It's just a it's a template. Life Plan right. is a digital template that you can use, and it's very helpful for structuring your business plan. Um, where people go wrong is they will use Life Plan as a budgeting tool, which mm. It's okay for a first round, but it's not, it's not the most user friendly for iterative use long term. It's really meant for the business plan. That's what it's for. Um, so if you're not sure how to actually look at your numbers in a strategic way and extrapolate what matters and then put it into live plan and use that as a modeling tool that way, then it can actually make you feel more lost because you'll go into it and you'll say, oh, I can figure this thing out. And then you start going line by line and it gives you tips and it gives you some help. But if you're not the kind of person to really have that um, figure it out mentality, it can leave you more frustrated than not. So you have to kind of know where your limits are, um, what your personality style is, because some people are just not built that way. And just, you know, right. spending hours and hours on the computer Googling, you know, how do I, how do I, um, how do I model out EBITDA and understand what that means for my business? If you're not a financially savvy person and you couldn't care less about it, but you're doing it because you have to for the business plan, it's a good moment to step back and say, okay, you know what, maybe I'm not the right person to do this alone and maybe I do need some support. And that's where you might do live plan and a consultant or live plan and hire some help. Right. Um, but live plan itself is a great tool because the structure again is it's, it's your traditional business plan structure. So it's a good place to start for putting things in, in draft form. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about these three components of, of a business plan for an SBA loan, which is going to be the breakdown of the use of funds. Mm -hmm. the projections and assumptions um, and then more so on the assumptions you know let's let's kind of elaborate on, on that so the use of funds is something that people tend to struggle with as one of the first problem points in a business plan effort um, it's easy to say I want to start a food truck or I want to start a daycare center um, but when you get down to how much money do you need and why that can be really overwhelming for entrepreneurs because it's one thing to have a dream and a vision, and it's another to have the actual action plan to execute it. And money is almost always that one thing that stands in the way from somebody having, you know, dream to reality. Right. So with use of funds specific to the SBA loan, you need to make sure that you understand in granularity and strong detail, what are the actual pieces that are going into this? So not just, you know, for a daycare, not just the building and not just, you know, oh, maybe, you know, five grand for marketing and maybe, no, 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 no. You have to understand specifically what you're going to need. How long do you need to have cash support for your operations after you open your doors? Because when you open day one, just because you run for a day doesn't mean you have profit. You're probably not going to have profit for a while. And that's where you understand through modeling what you need and then therefore can go to use of funds. So the use of funds is the output of the financial modeling. Financial modeling is the output of the assumptions. So when I do business plans with clients, one of the ways that we come to reverse engineer how much money do you need um, is first starting with the research. So we do financials as the second half of the process. So when you do your market research, you do your competitor analysis, you understand the market, things become clear to you naturally, right? Because you know, well, my competitors charge this, this, and this. So I have to charge something different or I have to charge exactly what they charge. Um, you can understand that they have a building that is, you know, 1,500 square feet for this, for this purpose. So I need a building that same size. So now you can go look at real estate that fits that bill. And that real estate is going to have a price tag. So now you can add that to your financials. So all of these things play together and they're important to, um, to be integrated from an earlier part of the process so that you can walk to that use of funds table in the end. But it is something that's an output, not something you can start with. Hmm. Um, so it's kind of a trick question that I start with with my entrepreneurs. I'll say, oh, how much money do you need and why? And like 98% of the time they say, I'm not sure how much I need and I'm not sure what I would need to spend it on because those answers go together, right? But that's a starting point so we can walk and do the research and really understand what it's going to take to start this thing for sure. Yeah. I know a lot of folks, you know, they'll just put working capital and then like, what does that mean? Like, what does that translate to? What is working yeah. capital? You know, that's so vague. Um so can we just elaborate for clarification on assumptions? Like, what does that mean? What are assumptions? So assumptions are the things that you're taking into account to justify your numbers, right? So if, let's take working capital. 
Mm -hmm. You can have a need for working capital that's based on assumptions. You can assume for three months, I'm going to need to have support for payroll because I'm going to train my staff before we go, we open our doors or because you can see where the profit starts to happen. We need uh, two and a half months of operational costs as working capital costs, because we're not going to be profitable until this date based on the financials. So it's okay to say working capital in your use of funds table, but you've got to have the numbers to back it up and the assumptions to back it up. So another piece to the assumptions is understanding, like we just said, what is everything going to cost and why? How do you know that? Um, you can't have an arbitrary marketing budget. You just can't. You have to know that I'm going to need a thousand flyers and they're going to cost this much money. Or I need to do pay-per-click campaigns on Facebook and Google and it's going to cost, I'm going to have a budget of a thousand dollars a month doing, you know, you have to have a strategy and you have to explain your strategy in your business plan. Because there's a hundred ways to do something because you can blow 10 grand on marketing and have no results, mm -hmm. or you can do a really strategic $500 and get all the clientele you need, but you have to budget that in so you know what you're doing because right. it's going to lead to a very unique outcome depending on your approach. Mm. Um, so all the, all the roll up to use of funds, you, once you unravel it and say marketing, what kind of marketing? Oh, online marketing. Oh, okay. What kind of online marketing? Are you going to hire a team to do organic everything for you? Or are you going to do paid ads and you're going to have a different kind of strategy where you're really, you know, drawing people in through pay-per-click ads or you're going to do events. Or you're going to do some kind of awareness thing at trade shows. Like what is it? And then let's research the numbers behind that because that's going to lead you to your use of funds total. Right. Okay. Um, how about uh, in that conversation, you know, construction, you know, how, how difficult is that mm -hmm. to deal with? It's not that hard. So what we do, and this is perfect for, for assumptions, when you say you're trying to build something from scratch, a, an actual physical building or a warehouse or a structure, and you don't have your contractors, you don't have your land purchased, you don't have anything really but an idea. There are industry standards that you can use as benchmarks, as rules of thumb. And those are beautiful, not only because they give you an answer, something you can actually go, oh, okay, you know, 20% um, of, of any construction build out project, you know, is going to be allocated to simply foundation work, right? You can start to create numbers around the industry standards. Um, but that also gives you something to keep yourself in check. Because if you're building something for the first time, and you have no experience doing this, how do you know what high or low is? How do you know what expensive or cheap is? How do you know if you're, you're pricing this thing right? I know when we had um, a few years ago, we had a car wash and we, before we got the one we got, we were looking at, do we build our own car wash or do we get an existing one? Do we franchise? And there are so many options, so many kinds of car washes. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Um, but one of the things we looked at was, you know, if we buy this one property in this one place, um, things you didn't think about, things like land surveying. And then if the land survey comes back and says, oh, you've got like, like happened, actually happened. You've got this giant gas reservoir under the ground that you have to get removed. Well, now a project that was going to cost you 150,000 is going to cost you 250, right? And you have to understand that stuff like that's going to come up. So you just assume it, you bake in some contingency. I always recommend a minimum of 20% into your asking amount. And you call it that contingency. It's the unknown. Just like if you're doing housing renovations, what you budget is very infrequently what you're going to pay. You're probably going to go over and instead of, you know, being blindsided by it, bake it in. Just assume, hey, you know what? I can't predict the future. So here's that bucket for stuff that's going to come up that I can't predict yet. Yeah. Um, but you do have to start somewhere. And you do that by starting with assumptions through industry standard rules of thumb. They're out there for almost every business. And if it's not, you can triangulate different business types and in different industries to get to rules of thumb for what you're trying to do. So it sounds to me that there's quite a bit of diligence that goes into, you know, preparing a business plan. It's not just throwing it together um, haphazardly, but it, it takes quite a bit of research, um, a lot of um, uh, verification of, of information and, um, you know, just really uh, effort and time to do it properly to, for it to be done right. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, One of the things you have to be able to walk to is... If they come back and say, why, mm -hmm. I have an answer. So that's kind of the gut check. You know, if the, if the bank comes back and says, well, why is this the number for this? You have to have an answer. You can't just pull it out of the air or you say, oh, well, my brother Bill said it costs this much. <laughs> Sometimes when you're building your assumptions, you can get credible information from a variety of sources. So you can do your market research based on just due diligence on the internet and, and you should. That's mm -hmm. actually the first place you should start. But you might also find value depending on your business type. If it's something that's, um, you know, the, the base of it is pretty common. If it's something that other people have done before, 
you want to start a boutique, you want to start a restaurant, you want to start whatever your business is, even online, you know, clothing, fashion. Um, other people have done it before, in which case you want to visit those forums, go, go into groups, go into threads, go into these discussion groups um, where you can talk to other entrepreneurs who have done it. Don't be afraid to ask them how much did it cost or what hiccups did you have or what advice could you give yourself if you could look back and do so. Um, some people get skittish about that because they feel like, oh, that's my competition. I don't want to. But there's enough business for everybody and they have insights that are going to help you avoid mistakes and avoid you from spending too much money, keep you from making really preventable errors that if you just asked a few strategic questions, you could avoid it yourself and be more successful. And they want to help you. Clubhouse. Um, but it is Clubhouse is great. Um, Reddit has some threads that are interesting. Facebook groups. Anywhere where you naturally go anyway is usually the best place to start. Quora. Mm -hmm. um, but asking some questions and seeing what people say can be extremely helpful. And that way you can go back in your business plan and say, you know, I got it from this discussion forum where they were talking about this, this niche of topic mm -hmm. um, from other people. So you, even though it's not like an industry report where you're getting that data, it can still be very credible because it is peer credit, right? Mm -hmm. If your brother Bill comes and tells you, hey, I think it's going to cost you this much based on, you know, whatever, gauge your source, gauge your source, because sometimes brother Bill doesn't know the best. But if you can go into a really um, a dense environment where everybody is doing the same thing and they can kind of give you insight based, you know, based on experience and with context, that's an amazing resource to leverage for building your business plan. Hmm. And, and I guess one other use of funds that, would be, I guess, very uh, challenging, especially for banks, is going to be like debt restructure. Um, yeah. talk, to, talk to us a little bit about that, maybe even in, in this uh, yeah. section. Yeah. So within, within the business plan, talking about debt restructuring, um, it's a delicate balance because you have to explain how not only is this loan going to help you smartly restructure, so you really want to explain where's your heartache with what you have now with your debt, right? Are the payments too high? Is the interest too high? What's the situation that's causing you heartburn? And then when you model forward your financial forecasting, you need to have a clear picture of how you're going to satisfy this new loan that you're about to get and how much, you know, how much more comfortable it's going to be to do so in this new scenario. Because what you don't want to do is show a, a debt restructure and now you're barely breaking even every month with this new modeling, with this new forecast. The bank's going to look at that and go, can you really support this new loan? Is this really going to help enough? Um, and you want to make sure you put yourself in a position to just, you know, show them you know what you're doing. You're being strategic. You're being smart, um, and you have enough cash flow now with this new scenario to really support a healthy business, a profitable business that's not going to go under, that's really going to thrive. Um, and show them how this debt restructuring is going to facilitate that. Awesome. So you know, there's there's so many use of funds right with an SBA loan. Um, you know, some of the more popular uh, use that banks love is going to be business acquisition, franchising, uh, debt restructure, they like that, construction and commercial property. Um, and so all of these are very unique um, and require different um, insight and approaches. Um, so I'd like to just, if, if someone's going to hire um, Ashley Cheeks, Written Success, you know, what does that look like? You know, tell me like from the beginning, what is that, how do you kind of get started? And then what's the timeline? What, what does that entire experience look like? Yeah, sure. So first we're going to have a consult call and just talk about what are your goals? What's your vision? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, I, again, I support entrepreneurs in every phase. So whether you just have an idea and you've done nothing else yet, but just have this brainstorming and rumination, I can help you from that point. If you have a full-fledged business that's expanding and growing, we can start there too. Um, but we'll have a one-on-one -on -one consult together, talk about your vision. Um, from there, if you're ready to move forward and work with me, um, I'll send you a 20 question questionnaire. And it's things like the name of your business, what year did it start, very basic stuff. Um, and then we get on a one hour kickoff call. And during that one hour call, we really get into detail. We really talk about what do you need? How are you gonna use it? And we do that together, that's a collaboration. I'm your partner for that hour. We talk about what do you really um, have to have in place to make this business succeed and then reverse engineer everything from there. So after that one hour call, I take it from there. And for the next 10 business days, I'm deep diving into the market, the industry, your competitors. I'm looking at how you can angle yourself in the market and I'm taking everything you've got in your mind and everything that you want to accomplish. And I'm incorporating a plan into how to actually get there. Um, after that 10 business days, you take a look at the draft to take a look at everything. It's always ready for SBA funding. It's always oriented for the bank. Um, if that's what your funding source is. 
Now, if it's for an investor, it's a slightly different you know, output, but same thing. Whatever your end goal is, is what we start with. So you're going to get your business plan. It's going to be finished, complete, and ready to present to the bank. If you have changes, if you have tweaks, I give you two free revisions on the house. No problem. Let's get this thing perfect for you. Um, but after that, it is all editable. So Word, Excel, so you can change it and update it as your business grows and evolves. Now, the thing that is, um, the thing that's really important is when you hand it over to the bank, and Sebastian, you know this, they're going to look for problems. That's their job. The underwriters are going to look for ways to pick it apart. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to probe it. They're going to try to work with it in a way that like really challenges you, right? Mm -hmm. So as a part of my support, I don't charge extra for it. But if the bank ever comes back and has questions that you need help with or that you just don't want to answer because you didn't like build this by yourself, you had help, just forward it to me. Just call me. Let's do this. We'll do it together. I'm happy to get on the line with the bank and talk with them. We can conference each other in. Not a problem at all. But that way, when they go through their due diligence of making sure you did your due diligence, the person that did your due diligence is there with you. And I'm here to support the whole process from wing to wing. That's awesome. That's amazing. So now, last question. I'm not looking for a loan or an investor. Should I build a business plan? Should I have a business yeah. plan? I mean, I know I'm biased, but yeah. yeah. Statistically speaking, mm -hmm. um, it increases your odds for success so dramatically, like like more than 50%, depending on some studies. It doesn't make sense not to have one. Just have one. If it's, if it's, if it's worth doubling your chances of not failing, why not do it? Right. Right. And it teaches you things about your industry and about your, your business and what you need to do and your customers who need to always be first in mind. It teaches you about them in a way that changes how you look at your own business, your industry, and your structure. And it guides you down a path that's way more successful than if you're going in blind or just going by instinct or going by your own knowledge and what you feel and think and you've experienced, which is invaluable. That's, that's the right place to start. But you have to round it out. You have to round it out with the market research, round it out with customer research, competitor research, and do your due diligence so that you set yourself up to succeed in the best way possible. So what I like to tell clients is, um, you know, your, your business plan is your roadmap and you wouldn't take a road trip across the country without a map, without directions and knowing every stop you're going to make. And, you know, you want to have that plan. And, and another valuable um, and practical use of the business plan is life happens, things happen in life and in your business that are unforeseen. If you don't have a roadmap, then it's going to be very difficult to adjust appropriately where if you have that roadmap, you can go right to that issue, to that point in your plan, and you can make the necessary adjustments very quickly and efficiently so that you're not going to lose time and money. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting how often things happen that are actually very predictable, that don't have to blindside you, but that come out in the business planning process that you can prepare for and mitigate proactively. Uh -huh which is another reason why you're right. The roadmap is everything, but you can see that you're going to drive through the mountains over there and you don't have chains for your tires. That's preventable. You could have shown up prepared and it's important to do the business plan so that you can see those things before they come up. So what you're saying is the, the business plan can help me predict some of the unnecessary pitfalls that I'm headed towards. If I had not prepared the business plan in advance, I would have just ended up in that pit because <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't surprised have surprised and blindsided by it because you, you didn't different. yeah you didn't see it coming so yeah absolutely it helps you Amazing. prevent by yeah, well if you if you watch the video you know why we have uh, Ashley joining us um, she's a, a wealth of wisdom so you know she will provide you with a consultation um, you're gonna see a link in the description below to be able to schedule a consultation with Ashley if um, if you're looking to start a business if you're an existing business if you're looking to uh, uh, get an SBA loan or not, or you're just brainstorming and you're thinking about what do I do next, um, and you want to, you know, have a expert professional who's really going to help you hold your hand through the process. Um, Ashley, obviously, is the person to do it. So um, definitely make sure you take advantage of a consultation. Ashley, I can't say anything except you know, kudos to you. You're awesome. Thank you so much for joining for your time and for your wisdom. Um, is there any uh, final words of wisdom that you'd like to leave with, you know, entrepreneurs, startups, anyone listening to the video? Um, if you don't have a business plan and you're successful or you don't have a business plan and you're struggling or you don't have a business plan, but you have an idea, you, you need a business plan. That's, that's my advice. <laughs> awesome.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Sebastian. Again, guys, thanks for watching SBA Experience. Uh, we're here to help. We're bringing valuable tools and resources to you. Again, click the link in the description below. If this video is of value, please make sure you like, you subscribe, and share. Thank you.